Colombia has done the impossible and made it to the Copa America final when all odds were against them. However, there was one player that has been the X-Factor for them. That man is James Rodriguez. His rise to glory in the Copa America has been a surprise to many. But in the past couple years, the decline of his football career has been insane. So to cover the story of the comeback of James Rodriguez, let's go back to the 2015-16 season. This was the peak of his career and the beginning of his decline. James had lost his place as a starter in this team that he retained for the last season. But at just 25 years old, he was able to make regular appearances off the bench. He was their main super sub, you could call it. Numerous times he subbed on and bailed out Real Madrid, for example against Real Betis in the second game of the season, scoring both a spectacular free kick and bicycle kick as well as providing an assist for Gareth Bale. He ran it back again against Sevilla too, scoring a goal that almost got them their comeback. No questions asked, he had a great start to the season. However, while on international duty with Colombia, he tore some muscles in his quads and didn't return until the 11th match week. This injury did not slow him down though as he scored in his first game back and Rafa Benitez, the manager at the time, continued to rely on him to come off the bench for Madrid. For me, the, the best player in the world, I think uh, he's a massive factor. Well, I think over the last six months, I think he's gone on to another level. Yeah, for me, the best, the best ever. Um, and I'm a really lucky guy to play, to, to can play with him. Fast forward to January though, and Rafa Benitez was fired. And Real Madrid brought in Zinedine Zidane. While they would go on to make history and become one of the most iconic Real Madrid managers in the 21st century, this was not a positive thing for James Rodriguez. By the end of the season, he had 8 goals and 10 assists, and also won the Champions League although he did not play a big part in their road to the final. Besides that though, he was beloved by the fans and was a pretty important piece in this Real Madrid team, considering some of the other star power. But his role in the team would start to change. In the summer transfer window ahead of the 2016-17 season, Zidane and his coaching staff signed a handful of players. But the most important right now is Marco Asensio. You see, when Zidane came into the Real Madrid job, his system did not cater to James Rodriguez very well, which is why towards the end of the season he was used less and less. Considering the rise of Isco and the fact that they pulled Asensio from loan, Hamas Rodriguez got pushed down the pecking order and almost completely fell out of favor with Zidane and got used as a rotational player. Now, as the season went underway, Hamas Rodriguez was seen coming off the bench in the more important games, but he did get to start against the weaker teams. He was pretty consistent in his output, scoring or assisting almost every other game, and doing that while coming off the bench is pretty impressive. But his relationship with Zidane was getting worse and worse throughout the season. Jaime was frustrated with him not getting enough playing time that he thought he deserved, and Zidane was not putting up with it. Trato y está aquí, y, bueno, es es verdad que ha jugado menos y y puede ser un problema, pero y James es igual que los demás, ¿sabes? Como el otro día te decía. Eh... This was well reflected when it came to the Champions League, where he was barely used whatsoever. Only making two appearances in the knockouts of the UCL, Real Madrid made it to the final, and James Rodriguez was not even included in the squad for that match. By the end of the year, his stats were pretty good, 11 goals, 12 assists, and only 20 starts. It became very evident that Zidane was going to sell him at the end of the season. On July 11th, 2017, James Rodriguez officially completed his loan move to Bayern Munich for two seasons. The main reason he landed at Bayern was due to the manager at the time, Carlo Ancelotti, who had previously worked with him at Real Madrid, which meant he was guaranteed playing time. However, there was one small issue. James Rodriguez was not able to make his debut in preseason, and not even at the start of the actual season, because injuries delayed his ability to come back to the pitch. He eventually made his debut on the 9th of September against Hoffenheim, where they lost 2-0. But in his next Bundesliga appearance, he did get to score an assist against Schalke, and that was enough to get him back into motion. James Rodriguez gives Bayern the lead, and he's taken it with an almost slow motion strike that was absolutely perfectly weighted to avoid the keeper and hit the target. What a fine piece. James was back into his best form for the rest of the season, and even when Ancelotti was sacked in October, he kept balling out. James even went as far to get the ultimate revenge on Real Madrid, scoring against them in the Champions League semi-finals. By the end of the season, James scored 8 goals and had 14 assists, winning his first DFB Pokal and Bundesliga title. He was in fact so good in his first year that Bayern's CEO personally thanked Ancelotti for bringing him in. He was selected by the Colombian national team to head to the 2018 World Cup and would actually go to play quite well, assisting 2 goals in their group match against Poland and even winning him out of the match award. But he did miss out on the round of 16 against England due to injury, where Colombia were then sent home. Back in Bayern though, the stars were aligned. And as the next season approached, things for Hamas could have only gotten better. The beginning of the year began just as normal, but three months into the season, things took a negative turn for Hamas. In a tight match against SC Freiburg, Hamas Rodriguez injured his knee, which rendered him out for eight matches. When he came back, he didn't look quite the same. He started to fall out of the high-flying form we saw last season and was struggling to score any goals at all. Near the end of the season, he got injured again, and that happened to be the last time that Bayern fans were going to see. Hamas Rodriguez quickly turned into a liability and moved back to Madrid for the 2019-20 campaign. He played his first game back for Los Blancos and it was underwhelming for the most part. But as he got more accustomed to how Real Madrid played, he started to make more and more appearances off the bench, pretty consistently up to mid-October. 
That was when Hamas Rodriguez suffered yet another major injury, and this time leaving him out for 10 weeks. Things should have returned back to normal when he came back, however he would only make one more appearance in the Liga after this injury. He had been pretty much tossed aside at Real Madrid and was a completely different player than he was 3 years ago, so it was time for him to leave Spain permanently. On the 7th of October 2020, Hamas joined Premier League club Everton on a free transfer and signed a 2 year deal. Once again, Carlo Ancelotti gave him another chance. He made his debut later in that month in a 1-0 win against Tottenham in their first game of the 2020-21 Premier League season. In his first five games in the Premier League, he had scored three goals and three assists. He was given a main role in the team and was starting matches consistently. For some reason, under Ancelotti, Hamas Rodriguez was on fire. He did really well uh, with me. I have a lot of confidence. He's a fantastic player. He's a fantastic professional to do his best for Everton first and for him also. His best match came against Brighton where he not only scored a brace but also assisted a goal to help Everton win 4-2. Hamas was the key to turning this Everton team into the best possible and it was clear that he was the missing piece for them. Hamas even scored in a 3-3 draw with Manchester United which was huge for Everton at the time. Hamas had turned himself into an irreplaceable player in this Everton team. Or so we thought. Throughout the entire 2020-21 season, Hamas Rodriguez suffered from injuries on multiple different occasions. And due to his fitness, he actually had to miss out on the 2021 Copa America. To put it short, Hamas was not fit to play at the elite levels right now because even at 30 years old, his injuries only got more frequent and more serious. The decline of his football abilities had been immense too, so when Qatari club Al Ryan approached him with a deal, he almost had to take it. This move was one of the worst decisions he could have made for his football career because he still struggled as a player in the Qatari league. He only made a measly 14 appearances, managing to score 5 goals and 7 assists in all those games. A player with the same level of experience and talent as James Rodriguez should be putting up better numbers. And football fans were almost certain that his career would dissipate from here. Fast forward to the 15th of September 2022, James Rodriguez was given a lifeline. He moved to Olympiacos in Greece and was given one more chance to play at a decent level. His debut started off fairly well for what you would expect. His main role was to play as a 10, and in his first couple of matches, he was actually able to score a few goals and beg a couple assists. From the outside, you would think that things were going well for him, but what was really going on was shocking. Once again, injuries plagued his play, and after only 23 appearances and lots of discussions with the management, his contract was terminated on April 13, 2023, and James was left without a club, and there were even talks of him retiring from football permanently. Three months later, James Rodriguez was reached out to by the Sao Paulo Football Club in Brazil. It was certain that James was never going to return to the heights he was at eight years ago, so he signed on a free transfer for two years. He made his debut against Fortaleza and subbed on, but didn't really do anything crazy. But in his Campeonato Paulista debut, he came out and gave a man-of-the-match performance scoring and assisting. As he continued to play for Sao Paulo, he was filling the role he was giving, and I can't say that he was incredibly good or bad, he was just a solid role player. Sao Paulo went on to play Palmeiras in the league. And would you believe it, Hamas Rodriguez was injured again and had to sit up for a few weeks. And actually, he hasn't played another club game since. At this point, the Copa America was about three months away, and you would think there is no chance he plays for Colombia going into this big of a tournament, considering he hasn't worn a Colombia shirt for over two years. But the Colombia manager liked him enough to call him up to play in the 2024 Copa America at just 33 years old. And I have no idea why, but when this guy puts on a Colombia shirt, he just goes crazy. His first match back with the national team was against Paraguay and he was named in the starting 11. There was lots of skepticism, I won't lie, about how a 33-year-old out of form Hamas Rodriguez would do at a top level like this, but nevertheless, they kicked off. Colombia very much took control and did not leave much room for Paraguay to get the ball. Around 30 minutes into the match though, Colombia had an attack that made its way to Hamas, and he whipped the ball into the box and right onto the head of Daniel Moniz to put Colombia up 1-0. It was nice to see him back balling out for Colombia, but he wasn't finished. 10 minutes later, he was put in charge of a free kick outside the area. James whipped the ball into the box again, this time onto the head of Jefferson Lerma, who would score Colombia's second of the game. Pargar would get one back later in the second half, but for the most part, the spotlight should be shown to James Rodriguez. He dropped a man of the match performance and proved all the doubters wrong. The next match was Costa Rica. Colombia were playing well and went up 2-0 by the 59th minute. With Costa Rica struggling to keep up, James was playing exceptionally. He was looking super dangerous as a playmaker and it was only a matter of time until Colombia found the net again. Three minutes after the second goal, James would find Joan Cuadroba on an incredible through ball that made for an easy finish. James once again making it look easy. The match finished 3-0 and James again won man of the match. The third and final match in the group stage, which was the most difficult, was Brazil. The match started in favor of Brazil with Rafinha finding the net in the 12th minute. Colombia had a hard time answering back and even though the match was going both ways, Colombia were struggling. Daniel Muniz was lucky enough to score right before half time and Colombia were back in it. However, neither team were able to break the deadlock on the match and it as a draw. But with 7 points in the group, Colombia marched on to the quarterfinals where they would face Panama. Colombia scored their first goal in the 8th minute with James Rodriguez taking the corner and once again landed it on the head of John Cordoba. In the 15th minute, Colombia got a penalty and of course it had to be James to slot it away to put Colombia up 2-0. Colombia had more and more opportunities throughout the first half, but in the 41st minute, James again sent a through ball to Luis Diaz from a free kick and bagged his second assist of the game. 
After half time, James cooled off a bit and was subbed off in the 73rd minute. And Colombia went on to smash Panama 5 0, with James winning his third man of the match and helping Colombia see the semi finals against Uruguay. The match began with both teams just feeling each other out, but quickly Colombia began to put on the pressure, and it was, yes, you guessed it, James Rodriguez to cross on the ball at Jefferson Lerma, where he was able to find the back of the net with his header, but Colombia up 1 0. This was Hamas' seventh goal contribution of the tournament, and he continued to ball out the entire game. Colombia were able to hold off the Uruguayans in the end and went through to the final to face Argentina. James started the match again and there was lots of pressure on him to perform. Through the entirety of the final, we saw him being the main man for Colombia, but nothing seemed to work. Half the match was fouls and time and time again, Colombia were getting their attacks shut out. Eventually, the match went to extra time where James was subbed out. And in the second half of extra time, Argentina were able to break through and effectively win the Copa America. Although James Rodriguez did not win, he did do an immense service for his country and was undoubtedly the player of the tournament. This story just proves that anything is possible, and as always, I'll see you next week.